looking at what happened here, we will see that the concept of having church workers actually came from the complaints of Moses. Meanwhile, if you look at Exodus chapter 18, from verse 13 to 18, Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, came to Moses when he saw the way Moses was leading the people, judging from morning to night. He told him that, Pastor Moses, what you are doing is not good. Let me give you a counsel. Let me take you through a one-day seminar that will change your life and your ministry forever. Father Jethro was the convener of the seminar. Pastor Moses, the first pastor of the church in the wilderness, happened to be the only person that attended the seminar. And at the seminar, Father Jethro gave Moses counsel that really helped him in the work of the ministry. Now later, even though he hearkened to the word of Father Jethro, but later he too began to complain that the burden of caring for the people was too much for him. And God said, don't worry. Gather 70 elders. Gather 70 people of the elders of the Israel. You know what I'm going to do? I will come down. I will talk to you in their presence. That's number one. Number two. I want us to take notes. When Bible puts certain things, they are not just put in the scriptures for the fun of it. I'm saying this because of the point I want to make. God said, I will put of my spirit that is upon you, upon them. And when God came down and spoke, he came down in the cloud and he began to speak. By the time he will do it, he took of his spirit, his own spirit that is upon Moses. And put it upon those people. And by the time he put it upon them, the Bible says they began to prophesy. What is the point I want to make? Every church has a spirit. The spirit of the leader will be the spirit of the worker. That's why I do tell church workers, brothers and sisters, any leader you don't want to carry his spirit, don't work under him. Once you know that your pastor is a genuine man of God, he is called of God, you want to serve God under him, then be ready to carry his spirit. I have leaders. I pray that their spirit will rest upon me. Oh, is their spirit superior to the spirit of God? No. There is the place for the spirit of God to be upon you. There is the place for the spirit of the house, the spirit of the leader to also be upon you. Can I give you a classic example? When, anybody, when any minister or any worker comes to the pulpit and say, somebody shout hallelujah. The spirit of which church is that? Eh? Eh? If anybody comes to the altar and say, you will shout this loud and clear. Say, any power. Which spirit? The spirit of Olukoya. The spirit of mountain of fire. In Jesus' name we pray. That is the deeper life spirit. When you hear a man of God moving up and down and banging words, you don't need to look too far that this one is Omo Yedeko. So what am I trying to say? Every house has a spirit. Every church has a spirit. Every leader has a spirit. Now, all these churches I've mentioned, okay, look at our own church now. I'm not talking about grace will. 
wo so fun olorun nbo lati wa now can i say this to you the workers and the followers in those churches unconsciously tap into the spirit of their leader there are certain things I've seen in Grace Way that is like many of us are copying our daddy. Am I communicating? It's because of the spirit of the house. You see, when it comes to working for God under a leader, you must be ready to carry the spirit of that leader. If you cannot carry the spirit, Joe, get out. Leave that place. Because every of your labor will not get reward if you stay under such a leader. So I want us to take note of that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now I want to quickly give us some points on why you are a worker. Why you are a worker. Why are you even a worker? You know, it is popularly said that when the purpose of a thing is unknown, abuse is, is, abuse is inevitable. Am I right? Uh -huh. Why are you even a worker? I'll give you some reasons why you are a worker. Now, to truly work very well in the church, we have to know the reasons why we are even working. Number one reason why you are a worker and you are working in the church it's not by accident, it is by divine arrangement. Number one reason is because you are important. Tell yourself, I am important. You are very, very important to play a great role in the divine plan of God. That is why God has chosen you to become a worker in the church where you are serving. Angels are not qualified for that work, but an important person like you and I. So God relies on you, it depends on you to carry out certain assignment in his vineyard because you are very, very important. You are God's representative, you are God's arm, you are God's leg, you are God's eyes, and you are God's mouth to serve in that church. May you not lose your importance in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, as workers, to know that you are very important, any day you are not on duty, they should feel your absence in that church. But the day you are missing in the church, the day you don't come to church, and nobody even asks, we don't see sister so and so, we don't see brother so and so, it means you are no longer important. Number two reason. Why you are important? Number two reason why you are a worker is that you have been saved to save others. You have been saved to save others. Brothers and sisters, daddies and mommies, the fact that you became born again and God did not take you to heaven immediately after your conversion is so that you can rise up for the salvation of others. You are a worker because you have been saved so that you can rise up for the salvation of others. So becoming a worker will give you the opportunity to serve and work for the salvation of others. Every born again person is called upon to be a worker. We are not just saved to continue to sit down, to continue to suck the messages we are hearing, but we have been saved to do what? To serve others. The Bible condemns idleness in his body, in the body of Christ. And we are constantly being exalted by the Lord that we should get busy with his work. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should work in them. So you have been saved to rise up for the salvation of others. 
Number three reason why you are a worker is that you have a gift to use. You have what? You have a gift at least to use. There is no giftless person in the body of Christ. Every one of us, we have one gift or the other to use in the vineyard of the Lord. May your gift not be useless. May your gift be useful. Because we are going to give account for that gift that is given to you. Don't forget the story of those guys that were given talents. The one who buried his home. What happened to him? Eh? He was condemned because he committed fornication or adultery. No. Why was he condemned? Because he did not put to use the gifts that God has given to him. And he was asked to be cast into outer darkness. What is the other name for outer darkness? Hell. So which means for somebody to have been gifted and graced. And for one to have failed to use that gift and grace. One may end up in hell. May you not go to hell, oh. Okay, I will not go to hell, didn't tell me. So you must discover your gifts. You must discover your potential and use them for the edification of the body of Christ. There is a purpose for which you are in that church. No one of us has become members of certain churches or certain denomination by accident. And God has given you that grit either to sing, to act, to do one thing or the other in the church. Don't fail to put that gift to use. The Lord will help us. Number four reason why you are a worker is that the harvest is plenteous. The harvest is what? Plenteous. Up to today, the harvest is still plenteous. And yet, the laborers are still very few. God is still searching for more workers to come into the vineyard. If all our members in the church, if all the congregation will become workers, they are still not enough. God is still looking for more hands to serve in his vineyard. May he find you to use in the name of Jesus. Number five reason why you are a worker is that necessity is laid upon you. Necessity is laid upon you. Sars and mass. There are so many people, much more people living now than in Bible days. And many of them are yet to be reached with the gospel. They are heading towards eternal damnation. So, necessity is laid upon you and I to become workers so that we can rescue the perishing. Up to today, souls are still perishing. You know, why we should take this issue seriously, the issue of rising up for the salvation of others and take it as a necessity is because a dead sinner is an eternal victory for Satan. There is no remedy again. There is no way that person can recover again. And God is not willing that we should perish. He wants as many as possible to come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And like I always love to say, daddies and mommies, heaven is so big to contain the whole world if the whole world decides to go to heaven. In fact, it has elastic power. If the whole world decides to go to heaven, heaven will contain all of us. But on the other hand, hell too has elastic power. If the whole world decides to go to hell, hell is big enough to contain the generation of man. So necessity is laid upon you. No wonder Apostle Paul cried out in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, 16, uh, verse 15. He said, what is me if I preach not the gospel? Mogbe, Timmy Obawa, Sui, Rere. 
Daddy, mommy, brother, sister, you want to be to ba wa so irere. How many points have I given? Five. Okay, let me give you two more. Why you are a worker? You are a worker because you are the extension harm of the ministry of your pastor. You are the what? Extension harm of the ministry of your pastor. Becoming a worker makes you the extension harm of the ministry of your pastor. That is, where your pastor cannot go, you as a worker can go there. As the senior pastor, as the one God used to found the church, he cannot be everywhere. And there is need to even delegate certain assignments. So, you are the extension arm of the pastor's ministry. Sometimes, when we as workers, we go out either for evangelism, for soul winning, or for one thing or the other, even for publicity of our program. Many times, by the time we are introducing Jesus to people, we still tell them and mention the name of our church. Sometimes, some people will give heed to us. Why? They already know our pastor. Sure, you are my boy, eh? Grace will you what? Eh? And they're listening to you. So you are the extension arm of your pastor's ministry. And whether you will have your own ministry tomorrow or not, will be dependent on how ably you are able to represent your pastor. The final point I want to give us. Why you are a worker? You are a worker because your reward in heaven depends on the work you do here. Your reward in heaven depends on what? On the work that you do here. That is our mummies. When we get to heaven, like I always love to say, there will be surprises. Yes. You know, there are some workers that are even working more than the leaders are doing. Don't be an eye service worker. Don't be a lip service worker. Be a heart service worker. Do it with all your heart. God is the only one that will reward us. And there are a lot of silent work we can do for the expansion of the kingdom of God and the growth of the church that we might not receive the reward here. But when we get to heaven, you will see what will happen. Out of all the apostles that directly walked under the Lord Jesus Christ, who made the greatest impact? Paul, did Paul walk directly under Jesus? See you now. You have gotten the right answer to give me. You didn't even mention the 12 or the remaining 11 and the replacements. But you went and mentioned Paul. Why? He did so, he worked so much. And you know what? When we get to heaven, our reward will be dependent on how our, our work here will be dependent on how close we get to Jesus. Do you know that when we get to heaven, ah, position now, some, yes, all of us cannot be on the same pedestal. The only pedestal that will be, that, that will be universal is that we all made it to heaven. We will all receive crown. Abby? And the crowns has different categories. So a one of me can see levels long. Levels Mawa. And with the crown. I walk on one star general and one. I walk on two star general. I walk on three star general. I walk on multi stars general. You uh, uh, you know, I walk on 
mo sun mo Jesus ju awon kan lo like my oga we say Dr. Akinjo he said if i walk here and i'm able to get too close to Jesus and you have to see me before you will see Jesus i might not allow you to see him the way you want to see him yes now i want come on. okay ni sure she can say awon kan o sun mo baba wa ju awon kan lo eh our company no leadership to je pe we can easily walk to his house not only to his house we can walk to his office anytime even without booking an appointment am i communicating that the moment baba here who is that is pastor so and so ah e je kan wole e je kan wole even though i want to rest but let him come i can't delay an anointed man of god i can't delay some of my leaders there is the 70, there is the 12. Abi? Larry 12. I want to do it. Larry 12. I want to do it. 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 I want Say our one leader is what? One say weary. One then say ka. See, look at the people I want walk out and what? Want do you lay one? Do you lay one in the sense that any small assignment, want to quit one? Any kini, want to quit one? I want to do it. I want to have a show. So one want to quit one? We are one way or the other. One team, Bible, spirit, leader. Yeah. But you are one way or the other. One thing, one second, one thing, one road you. The leader there will be. And by me, our leader doesn't have to even see us to get to know our countenance before the Holy Spirit will reveal them to us, to them. So you see them always calling on some people. Those people, if those people also call upon them, they will answer them easily. So let's work very well. And let's do whatever we are doing as unto who? As unto the Lord. All this idea of eh, we are working in the church. We want to we, we want to we want our leader to see us that we are working. Ah, oh come so you are here last you. Oh, Nick by Rimbe. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I said, May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So let's leave that area. I want to mention some points now again. I call it effective nuggets for effective and productive nuggets for church workers. I have about 21, but if I can just mention seven, I think I'll be okay. Be writing your questions, though. You want to be an effective and productive workers. You want to be effective and productive workers in the church. Take note of these nuggets. Number one, be sure that you are truly and genuinely saved and regenerated. That is fundamental. That is foundational. Be sure that you are truly and genuinely saved and regenerated. My brothers, my sisters, my daddies and mommies, there is no work we do in the house of God if we are not born again as a Danone. If you are not born again and you are working in the vineyard of the Lord, your case will just be like the ash of Balaam. So be sure that you are genuinely born again and you are regenerated. You know, I combine two words. Genuinely born again and what? Regenerated. One thing is to be born again. Another thing is to be regenerated. And what can they claim to be born again, but they are not regenerated? I 
Acts of Apostles chapter 8 talks about one man called Simon the Sorcerer who also claimed to be born again when evangelist Philip came to Samaria to preach. After his preaching, the Bible says, Simon also believed. And he accepted Jesus. You know, we evangelists, evangelist Philip didn't waste time. He went and did water baptism for someone that is not regenerated. After the so-called regenerate uh, water baptism, the Bible says, Simon continued to follow the apostles. He became a worker and was even following the apostles about. That's why, daddy, there are people that are not born again that could be part of our workforce. And there are people that claim to be born again, but they are not regenerated. Because they are old man has not been nailed to the cross. The old man is still very much alive in them. So, Simon began to follow the apostles. And later, Peter came to the same Samaria. And as he was preaching, he asked the people, if they have received the Holy Spirit. And they said they have not received the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, Peter now began to do what? Lay hands on them. And they were receiving the Holy Spirit. And as brother Walker our minister Simon saw what was happening. The Bible says he put his hand in his pocket. Say, Ogapita. 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 How much? How much? Give me this power also. So that whoever I lay my hands on, we also receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter had to rebook him. That your money perish with you. That I perceive you are still being bound by iniquity. Then you better repent of this your evil ways. Yes. Your age will be worse than your beginning. What does that tell us? It is possible to be working for God and you are not regenerated. Because the moment he dipped his hand into his pocket, he saw what was happening as an opportunity to continue to make money. Because the Bible says he has bewitched the people of Samaria with his sorcery for many years. So what if you show you? What if it's a business? What if you show you? 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 God help us. The issue of getting born again is very, very important too. For adventure, we are real our water je worker. I'm a we are here to accept Jesus as our Lord. We have our names in the register of the church, but the names the names are not written in the book of life. It is high time you surrender your life to Christ. So that your labor in the vineyard will not be in vain. Well, my I say that but then you have a pair of soccer. Don't go, you can't be a law. Or all the way, I want to be a law, meaning that Timothy was a Timothy, Jawaka, and Shoshika. Yes. The church where I got born again, Christ Apostolic Church, that theory, Akimbola, this street. Pipeline. Was where I got born again some few years back. I was a worker. I was an altar usher. I was ushering people into the kingdom I was not ready to go. Can you imagine that? Agberu, lesson, lesson. Until that day, that day my pastor preached. When he made the other call and I came out, he thought as an altar usher, I wanted to come and guide those who want to give their life to Christ. But he saw I was facing him. How shall you come and face the altar? He looked at me and said, Bro? He didn't know I was not yet a bro. It was there. I knelt down. 
He prayed for me and I got born again. Okay, I got born again, again. Because all along, I'll be religious. You know, there are some things. We leaders, we church leaders, all along, all along. When some members put up activities, their zealousness to work, we assume that they are born again. So we just keep on giving them assignments. And yet, oh, and if we can't look, God will help us. So get born again, you know. Tell your neighbor, are you truly saved? Come on, I say that no, no, no. Number two, nuggets. Possess strong, unshakable, and unwavering faith. Faith in the Lord. To be an effective and productive worker, you must possess strong, unshakable, and unwavering faith in the Lord. Hebrews 11, 6. The Bible says that it is impossible to even please God without faith. So every worker must have strong and unshakable faith in the Lord. Many times, the assignment you are given, the devil will push fear into you that you should be afraid. Hey, I'm the one they ask, I should go and read the lesson. Hey, me that I don't know how to read in English. If you cannot read in English, then read in Yoruba now. Now I'm forced to speak English. English now like your, your mama language. Eh? You are not my Lord. Tap on me, tap on me. But you need strong faith in the Lord. When the devil put send fear, mask that fear with faith. You know, there are two things you can do. You either allow fear to drive out faith from your heart, or you allow faith to drive out uh, fear from your heart. The decision is yours. And when it comes to fear and faith, a friend said something to me some time ago. He said, whenever fear knocks at your door, send faith to go and open the door. By the time faith gets to the door, you discover that there is nobody there. And you know when it comes to fear, what you are even afraid of is afraid of you. What you are afraid of is even afraid of you. So why, why do you have to continue to be afraid? Number three. The third not gets. Be constant and consistent in your prayer life. Both for yourself and for the church. As a worker that will be effective and productive, you must pray constantly and consistently for yourself and for the church. Your prayer life is your jugular vein. Don't abdicate or shy away from your responsibility of your secret prayers. Let us take time to pray. You know, walking in the vineyard of the Lord requires strong prayers. Don't think that any time we are serving in the vineyard of the Lord, that all the people that are congregated, that all of them are children of God. Do. I want to load you fall down and die. I want tafa ton tafa. I want to show you. I remember the story of one of our fathers in the Lord. That incident happened at CAC. Baba over there, car wash. Some years ago. When Baba Obadari came there to minister, and as he was preaching, some people from witchcraft, some women, and they joined their hands together, three of them, and they were firing Baba Arrow as Baba was preaching. 
And you know, because of the anointing, the arrow could not get to Baba. The arrow deflected. And began to go to the interpreter. It was Baba who used his hand to help in the interpreter help. Ura Olusubu. And now commanded the arrow to go back to the senders. And the three women jump up and began to confess. So don't tell me that even all of us that are here, we are all children of God. If care is not taken, Epo mo fun alikama pa o So alikama good already lati gba dura ki alikama gan ko di gudugudu Jesu ti o fi gba kan tura le Emi ti ri osha to gba ofa ninu church la ro Sunday ni church kan legbeda ko to di pe won gbe de Chevron Hospital o ti ku o Orisi risi lo nse le o ati ri pastor to n wa asu ti owo airi to gba lenu ti enu e de wo ko to di pokuro lori pulpit so ta se ita ni ofa yen ti wa inu ile na ni adura o se koko go we help us i say go we help us another nugget how many have i given now three okay another nugget don't ignore daily reading and studying of the word of God. Don't ignore daily reading and studying the word of God. As workers in the vineyard of the Lord, we cannot do this work successfully without the word of God. You have to be loaded with the word of God and I have never seen any incantation that is as powerful as the incantations in the scriptures. I want a yajotole. I want to get a bank on me. Then the kidney will resist. You know, Boloa, you know, Bibeli Loa. Go say, no, we are one Baloa. You know, Bibeli Loa. So, as workers, you can't work successfully if you are not loaded with the word of God. You need this word of God inside of you. That's why you have to practice what I call RSMM. What is RSMM? Read the Bible. Study the Bible. Meditate on the Bible. Then memorize the Bible. See, over the Bible, Bible is in the practice, lay. Many times, I want to talk about our rhetoric prayers. 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 I want to talk about our rhetoric Kini ko se. Ha, baba. Ye, se, se, se. Awa ma gbari le le le. Kilo wi, kilo so. You have not said anything. You are only doing spiritual gymnasium. Be gymnastic in other people. Yes. When you even want to pray, you have to pray scripturally based prayers. Prayers that are scripturally substantiated. Prayers that are Bible based. When you learn to pray the scriptures, the devil cannot but bow before you. Every month, so, Adura, Ankan Lekun, Inye, Ongwe Baba Dide, Sukun Aro Loro, Omu Edam Kiakiawa, Ode Muki Otako Safunwa. 
The devil is afraid of men of God, workers in the church that has the word. If the people of darkness could cram incantation, what stops us, children of God, from cramming the scriptures? I brought this with one or two stories. Maybe I can close it there. We will still continue. A man of God from America came to Africa to hold a crusade. He came with his team of ministers and he was lodged in an air-conditioned hotel. He was in a room. His other ministers were in another room. So he was resting. As he was resting, suddenly he began to feel strange heat. You know, you are right, you go now. Nobody here, no rebirth. By the time he opened his eyes, at one corner there, he saw the devil live and direct. And the devil said to him, You drove me away from your country. I left for you. Now, where I am ruling and railing, you are the God and the audacity and the temerity to come. Oh, you are beginning to say your last prayers because you are going to die today. And this man of God said he knelt down and he prayed for 30 minutes. When he opened his eyes, the devil said, are you done? He requested for another 30 minutes. He knelt down again and began to pray. After the 30 minutes, he called. He opened his eyes. The devil said, are you now okay and ready to die? Ah uh ah. -uh. He said he now decided that I wanted to run into the other room to go and call the other ministers so that they can join him to pray. As he made move to go, he said he had the Holy Spirit said, if you move out of that room, that is how you will continue to run away from the devil for the rest of your life. He said, now said, Lord, what do I do? He said, the Lord now said, Sebi, you have prayed. Now, quote the word. Use the word. He said, it was then his understanding now. He said, he now told him, hey. so, uh, Mr. Devil, so you are still there. The Bible says. He said, he now began to quote scriptures upon, upon scriptures. As he was about running, anytime he quotes a scripture, the devil will do like this. Ahem! He will quote another one, the devil will do like this. He said, at a stage, he said, the Bible says, receive the devil and he will flee from you. And the Bible says, a name has been given that is above every other name. The dimension of the name. He said, hmm, shut up. Don't mention the name. You are not going to die again today. You die another time. And the devil disappeared. What saved him? Prayer. Let me share a personal experience. I was working with a man of God some years back in one denomination. Uh, we used to hold our program every Wednesday. It's a deliverance program. And, you know, deliverance program like that, after the general program, people that need special administration will still wait. So that very day, the people that needed special administration waited to see the man of God. So, because there were many, now my father and the Lord, now call me, one evangelist, and one other brother. He said, oh yeah, the three of you, oh yeah, take this sister before the altar. Um, join your hand around her. And pray for her and minister to her. We surrounded the sister. All of us, we were carrying our Bible in our hand and we were praying. As we were praying, the sister was just manifesting small, small. 
So it got to a stage. We now began to quote scriptures. As we were quoting scriptures, she became violent. Because the demons in her could no longer resist the power of the word of God. Can I show you the way she was manifesting? There is no way I can. I, okay, I will just use mouth to describe it, sir. This sister, her two legs will be lifted from the ground. Physically, I'm not telling you film. I'm not telling you vision. I'm not telling you dream. I know be said then tell me. Now the thing with my eyes see koro koro because I was involved. Her two legs will be lifted from the ground and she will move like this. When her head is about touching the ceiling fan, she will come down. And she will repeat the process. To tell you the truth, I was afraid. So I was using style to Yes, now. Come on, whatever they be. As I was drawing back, the brother that was with us, we all carry Bible. The brother now, what was he trying to do? Let me ask you this question. Is it an offense or, offense or a crime to open Bible while praying? Is it a crime? It is not a crime. <laughs> well, I saw another thing that day. As the brother was opening the Bible, he was, maybe all of us, we have places we have marked in our Bible now. Ah. For easy searching. Ah. So, the brother, as he was opening, suddenly, like a flash, the sister kicked the Bible out of his hand and said, quote from your heart. Can't you see your mate? Eh? Mate. Quote from your heart. From that day, I learned to go and be memorizing the scriptures. Many times. It is the word you have inside of you that will deliver you You will, you will find yourself in some situation whereby you cannot even bring out your Bible from your bag. Supposing they snatch your Bible. Supposing you enter one chance bus. They carry away your bag and your Bible. How will you get out? Something happened to a brother some years back. He was kidnapped by ritual killers. In fact, they have killed so many people in his presence. Where he was sitting, you know what he was doing? He was using his finger to write Jesus is Lord. And anytime they look towards his side, they will always see fire. So they now said, let somebody go and see what he's doing. And they saw he was writing Jesus is Lord on the floor. You know the next thing? They bound the hand backward. He now began to quote scriptures with his mouth. When they were hearing the word, they were having trouble killing other people. So they now became, they now gag his mouth so that he will not be able to talk again. But because he was quoting in his heart and yet trouble was happening in their presence. So how much of God's word do you have inside of you? If you come face to face with a way, you lost soon. I want Baba Osha. Do you want back better? See, you go get it. Be late to sell it. See, I rock on it. Walk on. Need your eye. Need your eye. Look, pa. Let go. Let you know new. Brother, you were born in new. You know when you get newly get born again. You know the seed to share the scriptures. Brother, you were born new. Boss, 
inu ba bi baba yen igba ton bole ni jora ni jora wa ikan na ni o the old man now has the brother to come down say you you did not allow me to sell my market inside the bus he ta wi fo gbo logbo gbo he ta fi gbo logbo agba he began to chant incantation and he now commanded the brother to do what to begin to pull off his dress eh ni ha agbara wa nu oro ta lo oro gan bi se jesu oni kan oro modi modi ni bi ti oro gba ngba oro gidi bi oro gbin bi wa the brother began he pulled his shirt he pulled his trousers he was about pulling his uh, uh, boxer when another brother who was seeing what was happening got angry in the spirit and then approached them i said baba enough stop it brother pull long pull on your uh, trousers why would you obey that nonsense come on baba there is no enchantment against jacob no divination against israel no weapon formed against this brother shall prosper that any weapon that, that rises against him in judgment the law will condemn this is the heritage of the children of god baba all that you have casted on him we are back to sender you are the one that will pull off your dress and run naked you know the next thing the baba began to pull off his own while the brother was wearing his own rise up on your feet Agbara Yesu da ni bi ti Jesu gbe njoba Agbara Yesu da ko si o o ti wo Yesu da ni bi ti Jesu gbe njoba Agbara Yesu da ko si o o ti ko si o o ti wo Kosi o ti wo Agbara Yesu da ni bi ti Jesu gbe njoba Agbara Yesu da kosi o o ti Agbara oro da ni bi ti oro tin gbe oro mi wa Agbara o ta da kosi o o ti wo Oti wo ko si 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 oti wo agbara Yesu da ni bi ti Jesu pe njoba agbara Yesu da Amen. I want us to pray just two prayers. Then we ask our questions. Say, Father, let the power of your word, let the understanding of your word, and the wisdom of your word come upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Oluwa, je ki agbara oro re, je ki oyi oro re, je ki ogbon ati mo oro re, ko wonu aye mi. Ki ma ba di eran ije fun satani. Let the power of your word, the wisdom of your word, the grace of your word, the anointing of your word, the power of your word, the understanding of your word. And the wisdom of your word come upon my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Say any power. Any power. I want you to shout it loud and clear. Say any power. Any power. Assigned to make me a useless worker. You are not the one that called me. Abon lo pe yin ni Ani agbara kagbara ti a ti yan lati so mi di otu ba te osise eyin ko le pe mi eyin ko le de yan mi 
Oya eshe bedano. Oya koru ko Jesus ko badura be. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Let's be seated. As we prepare our question, I want you to take note of these two scriptural passages. Early this morning, as I was praying concerning this program, these two scriptural passages, the Lord kept asking me to use it to wrap up. Galatians chapter 6. From verse 6 to 10. Galatians chapter 6. From verse 6 to 10. Let him that is taught in the world Communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he also reap. For he that sweat to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sweat to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of uh, faith. Whatever we do in the household of God is a seed that we are sowing that we will reap. May you reap bountiful harvest in Jesus' name. The second passage of the scriptures, Hebrews chapter 6. Verse number 10. Hebrews 6, 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. If you look at it very well, it is continuous. We have ministered to the saints. And we still continue to do it. And God is not unrighteous. Our leaders can forget our labor of love. But God will never forget it. Our leaders might not even be aware of our labor. But God is aware. So, he is the one that will reward us. May God help us in Jesus' name. Questions? You have written your question, please lift it up. Let our pastors collect. Or you want to come out to ask. Why I don't want to give people chance to come and ask. I don't want a situation where our question will be giving birth to question. Okay, let's do it this way. You have questions, stand up. You have questions to ask. Stand. Come. So that we know those who have questions. Come outside, sir. This way. Only two people. If you want to ask, come and join them before they begin to ask. If you don't join them now, if you now say you want to ask, 
because you thought they would ask your question and they didn't ask your question. One, two, three, four, five. Good. That's the number of grace. Oh yeah, number one. Thank you very much for the teaching, sir. God bless you, sir. My question is, is it only in the church of God that a person can be a worker? Is it only in the church that somebody can be a worker? Can somebody also be working for God outside and not be a worker in the house of God, in the church? Let me use that. Thank you, sir. Let me briefly answer the question. It is not only in the church that you can walk. As a child of God, once you are born again, that's why I, I first talk about why you are a worker. As a child of God, that is a worker in the vineyard of the Lord, you can also work in your office. Whenever the opportunity presents it to reach out to people, you have to reach out to them, even in your working place. Not only in your working place, even in the marketplace, you can reach out to people there. Many times, the way we live our lives, the way we comport ourselves in our offices, we are actually working for God. Why? If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says that we are ambassadors of Christ. Who is an ambassador? An ambassador is someone that represents the interests of his country in another place. As a worker in the vineyard of the Lord, you are representing Christ in your office. When you enter bus, you are a representative of Jesus inside that bus. Conductor might even want to test you by giving you change that is above your change. As an ambassador of Christ, you must return the money. That's when you are a good representative of Christ. So it's not only when we serve, uh, we clean in the church, we serve on Sunday service, uh, during Sunday worship service, or whatever. No! Everywhere we find ourselves, we are workers, we should represent Christ. Even when you are driving on the road, eh, you are Christ's representative. So you have to have that mindset. Anywhere you find yourself, that you are a worker in God's vineyard. We are talking about God's vineyard. We are not talking about working in a local church alone. It is universal. That's what we mean. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number two. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, please, sir, you made mention of uh, some people being born again. Okay, sir. Now, we, the experience we have is that in most cases, or in a good number of cases, people that we see otherwise are Christ Christians in the church, when they go out, they are very good workers in the church, when they go out and things happen, their reaction will indicate to the people around them outside that they are not Christians because they are not ambassadors for Christ. That's why people keep asking, is he a Christian? Are you a pastor? And the cousin said a Christian. Because we keep forgetting that we are on duty. That we are workers. Anywhere you are, your reaction must be standard. Christ must be proud of you. Not only in the church. Sir, did you? Where is he? You got to ask that question. Anywhere, everywhere, you are on duty. That's why the point that was made, because you are important, you are important for, for Christ. That's why he chose you as a worker. So when you get to Oshodi and they bank your car from the rear, you don't come and say, Whoa, Mali, working, working. Some people will know, will see you and say, Ah, Pastor Waliel. <laughs> Is that now let me give you a particular example. Two days ago, no, yesterday, the red uh, Siena. The church red Siena bus was uh, was uh, hit from the back. Of course, anybody who hits at the back is, is the one that's faulty. The man came out and said, ah, sorry, his wife just put to bed. What must he do? He, will he pay for it? And they called him and said, ah, no. 
this church does not take uh, revenge, you let him go. The man didn't come here. In fact, things that have happened many times, they will now come to the church here to say, indeed, this is a church of God. Please, in God's name, we are on duty for God at all times. Thank you for that emphasis. Yes, sir. Um, sir, please, you made mention of uh, some, uh, it's possible someone, for someone to be born again and it's not regenerated. Uh, so, that's two words got me confused. Because, um, uh, of course, by the grace of God, one should be born again and the other aspect to be regenerated. So, I just want to know so I can explain the differences uh, okay. so that we get to better understand. Thank you. Let me explain it this way. Uh, at the point that you surrender your life to Christ, that you confess Christ, it's like the tree of sin in your life is cut down. But the stump is still there. So, it is the daily walking that will be removing the root. Small, small. It will take time before full regeneration will take place. That's why the Bible says we are all growing until we reach the full stature of Christ. Now, to be regenerated means I claim to be born again yesterday. I was, I was an habitual liar. But today, I had opportunity to tell lies. But something tells me, if you tell lies, you are vastly dead. Ah? Okay, let me tell the truth and let the devil be ashamed. Even though if they will flog me, let me tell the truth. Which means, I'm getting regenerated gradually. I used to steal before. I now have opportunity to steal. But I didn't touch the money. Work of regeneration is taking place in my heart. The things I used to do, the things I called form before, when I now look at them and I'm being pushed to do them, I now get afraid. That, hey, how can I do this thing? Not sin against our pastor now, but sin against who? Against God. It means the work of regeneration is taking place gradually. The work of regeneration is not done in a day. It's a gradual process. That is why the moment you get born again, there is need for you to join a Bible-believing church where you will continually be hearing the word of God, where you will begin to fellowship with other children of God, where you begin to distance yourself from your sinful friends and sinning friends. For instance, when I became born again, part of the work of regeneration that God did was I now began to hate drinking beer. And I had an opportunity to attend a party with some of my senior friends. Because the party is not a party I cannot, I must not go. I must have to be there. I was there. Around 10 p.m., they were bringing beer, bringing wine, bringing orishi orishi. I said I was not going to drink. I knew it was God that really helped me that day. It was not me. But I just said, I'm going to go to the I not go to the I not go to I not go to the I not go to the I not go But that day, God helped me to stand my ground. One of them now said, If you did it, you did it. You did it. You did soft drink, man. You did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. Around one, I go to the house. Around two, when you did it. You did it. You soft drink, man. You did it. You did it. Time we are there, say, I bought two water. I hear ice water. Ni. Eh, when you call Obama, why ice water? Two, two. When you have two more ice water, all they be calling you, or two, 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 very cozy, me lay ya. Muni, me, or moon, come, come on. Answer a force immediately. Now, by force to drink, till every month, I don't want party in your mojuni. I didn't drink. Me, or Lord, did they just come over me? Which, which was very, very unusual of me. 
ko si bo se ma ma mo tito ni ma like obirin so regeneration don't take place till we get to where we are the lord will help us in jesus name number 3 thank you very much sir so my question is in a small denomination of a church yes, where workers have um, an upper hand of working for god i believe there is a vision in that denomination what can we do that the vision can radiate in each and every worker because i believe it is coming together and working in the house of god that can bring fast results what can we do whereby we see a case that some workers are still lacking behind how can we be of help sir one of the ways to develop and to help in such a church is for the pastor to keep sharing and resharing the vision of the church aside that there is need for meetings like this you know when the purpose of a thing is unknown abuse is inevitable you know in many of our churches we just gather people as well in churches we are of we are two or three are gathered in my name and yeah our query data our number our not the worker our not the minister our not the everything now as we are there there are things we need to get to know that if we don't know them like what i just shared the first this thing why you are a worker some people don't know why they are even working if you ask some workers in the church why are you an usher i don't know and i can join an usher why are you in the choir eh o jo kan mo give testimony mo de korin won ni mo lohun kin lo dara po ma won akorin you know that's the way some church leaders draft people into the workforce and we are putting square peg inside round hole so we need to keep our people trained we need to keep on training and retraining until they will buy into the vision and understand what the church is even standing for so that is the way to really help look at what the, the, the bible passage we read how moses complained and god said he should gather people so god will help us finally my sister ah okay so me finally my question is diverting to two ways okay first of all um what if we are in a situation by whereby it's just you and the devil and you've prayed you've prayed nothing is happening i will show you remember that the devil to not to quote the bible very well yeah so you are quoting bible the devil is showing the same bible verse to you you are quoting the devil is like repeating the same bible verse what do you do because in my former church my brother to say speak in a language the devil does not understand that start speaking in tongue i'll be like what are they saying i don't have to say anything so if i'm that kind of situation let us give up and die like that or or start crying because it's so confusing because some Because the Bible, the devil is causing the Bible. As I'm causing, it's to get to a point that I have to go down. Because the devil surely like has many quotes in him, and I cannot speak in tongues. So, what's like? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, reading the bible studying the bible meditating on the bible and memorizing the bible there are four different things hmm now you read you study you meditate on you memorize you still need to pray for the understanding that's why i said we should pray that prayer You know when you really have the understanding of the word of God inside of you the devil the one he will quote he will use tight to want to twist it you know he did that for Jesus but because Jesus had deeper understanding of the word of God he didn't fall for the devil you know after the 40 days fasting and prayer Jesus was coming from the mountain abi eh uh-huh. and the devil put three tests before him he said yeah, the bible says he took him to the pinnacle of the temple okay first of all he took him to a high mountain he showed him the glory of the whole he showed him the whole world and he told jesus 
Look, just bow for me. You know, all these things, they are in my care. The key is in my hand. Once you buy, bow for me, I'll give them to you. Was the devil telling lies? No.